My beloved brothers and sisters, I pray that we may be spiritually renewed by the inspired message from our leaders this weekend and rejoice in what I love to call covenant confidence through Jesus Christ. This confidence is the quiet yet certain assurance of receiving the blessings that God promises for those who keep their covenants and is so needed amid the challenging circumstances of our day. Inscribed on the front of each temple is a solemn statement, Holiness to the Lord. These inspired words are a clear invitation that when we enter the Lord's house, we embark on a sacred journey of learning to become higher and holier disciples of Christ. As we make covenants in holiness before God and commit to follow the Savior, we receive the power to change our hearts, renew our spirits, and deepen our relationship with Him. Such an endeavor brings sanctification to our souls and forms a sacred bound with God and Jesus Christ, who promised that we can inherit the gift of eternal life. The result of this sacred journey is that we obtain a holier and higher confidence for our day-to-day -day lives within our covenants made through Jesus Christ. Such confidence is the pinnacle of our divine connection with God and can help us increase our devotion to and gratitude for Jesus Christ and His atoning sacrifice. It fortifies our ability to love and serve others and it strengthens our souls to live in an unholy world that is increasingly dark and discouraging. It empowers us to overcome the seeds of doubt and despair, fear and frustration, heartache and hopelessness that the enemy tries to drive deep into our hearts, especially when life is hard, trials are long, or circumstances are difficult. A biblical verse offers sound advice for each of us as we lean into the stiff wind of today's worldly challenges. Quote, cast not away, therefore your confidence. Close quote. Dear brothers and sisters, those who gain genuine confidence in the covenants made in the house of the Lord through Jesus Christ possesses one of the most powerful forces that we can access in this life. When God the Father offered His only begotten Son as a sacrifice for us, Jesus Christ Himself became the highest symbol of our Father in Heaven's undying love for each of us. Jesus Christ became the Lamb of God. We have the privilege and blessing of being invited into a covenant relationship with God in which our own lives can become a symbol of that covenant. Covenants create the kind of relationship that allows God to mold and change us over time and lift us to become more like the Savior, drawing us closer and closer to Him and our Father, and eventually preparing us to enter their presence. Each person on earth is a beloved son or daughter of God. When we choose to be part of a covenant, it enhances and deepens our relationship with Him. President Russell M. Nelson has taught that when we choose to make covenants with God, our relationship with Him can become much closer than it was before our covenant, and it enables Him to bless us with an extra measure of His mercy and love. The covenant path is all about our relationship with God. Our Father wants a deeper relationship with all His sons and daughters, but it is our choice. As we choose to draw nearer to Him through a covenant relationship, it allows Him to draw nearer to us and more fully bless us. God sets the conditions and obligations of the covenants we make. When we choose to enter into that relationship, we witness to Him through the symbolic actions of each covenant that we are willing to abide by the conditions He has set. Through honoring our covenants, we enable God to pour out the multitude of promised blessings associated with those covenants, including increased power to change and become more like our Savior. Jesus Christ is at the center of all covenants we make and covenant blessings are made possible because of His atoning sacrifice. As we attend the temple, there can come to us a dimension of spirituality, a feeling of peace. 
we will grasp the true meaning of the words of the Savior when he said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. I have been blessed to feel that peace every time I enter the sacred temple. Brothers and sisters, I humbly testify that as we attend the temple, we can be reminded of the eternal nature of our spirits, our relationship with the Father and His divine Son, and our ultimate desire to return to our heavenly home. In recent conference addresses, President Russell M. Nelson taught the safest place to be spiritually is living inside your temple covenants. Everything we believe and every promise God has made to His covenant people come together in the temple. Each person who makes covenants in temples and keeps them has increased access to the power of Jesus Christ." Close quote. He also taught that once we make a covenant with God, we leave neutral ground forever. God will not abandon His relationship with those who have forged such a bond with Him. In fact, all those who have made a covenant with God have access to a special kind of love and mercy. Qualifying to make sacred covenants is not a one-time effort, but a lifetime pattern. The Lord has said it will take our full heart, might, mind, and strength. Frequent participation in the ordinances of the temple can create a pattern of devotion to the Lord. When you keep your temple covenants, you remember them. You invite the companionship of the Holy Ghost to both strengthen and purify you. You may then experience a feeling of light and hope, testifying that the promises are true. You will come to know that every covenant with God is an opportunity to draw closer to Him which will then create a desire in your heart to keep temple covenants. We have been promised because of our covenant with God, He will never tire in His efforts to help us, and we will never exhaust His merciful patience with us. It is through the sealing covenants in the temple that we can receive the assurance of loving family connections that will continue after death and last for eternity. Honoring marriage and family covenants made in temples of God will provide protection from the evil of selfishness and pride. Trials, challenges, and heartaches will surely come to all of us. None of us are immune from the thorns of the flesh. Yet, as we attend the temple and remember our covenants, we can prepare to receive personal direction from the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, I bear witness that there is nothing more important than honoring the covenants you make or may make in the temple. No matter where you are on the covenant path, I urge you to qualify and become eligible to attend the temple. As I reflected on the often hectic pace of our modern lives, the busyness, noise, diversions, distractions, and detours that so often seem to demand our attention, a scripture came to my mind, be still and know that I am God. I pray the Holy Ghost will enlighten each of us as we consider a higher and holier dimension of stillness in our lives, an inner spiritual stillness of the soul that enables us to know and remember that God is our Heavenly Father, we are His children, and Jesus Christ is our Savior. This remarkable blessing is available to all church members 
who are striving faithfully to become covenant people of the Lord. The foundation of our lives must be connected to the rock of Christ if we are to remain firm and steadfast. The sacred covenants and ordinances of the Savior's restored gospel can be compared to the anchor pins and steel rods used to connect a building to bedrock. Every time we faithfully receive, review, remember, and renew sacred covenants, our spiritual anchors are secured ever more firmly and steadfastly to the rock of Jesus Christ. To have a spiritual assurance that God is our Heavenly Father, we are His children, and Jesus Christ is our Savior. The Lord provides both sacred times and holy places to help us experience and learn about this inner stillness of our souls, places of reverence, worship, and learning. Where the Spirit of the Lord may dwell, and where God's children may come to the knowledge of their Redeemer. If we will, we can be still in our holy places of worship and know ever more surely that God is our Heavenly Father, we are His children, and Jesus Christ is our Savior. The temple is another holy place, specifically set apart for worshiping and serving God and learning eternal truths. We think, act, and dress differently in the house of the Lord from any other places that we may frequent. In His holy house, if we will, we can be still and know that God is our Heavenly Father, we are His children, and Jesus Christ is our Savior. The principal purposes of sacred time and holy places are exactly the same, to repeatedly focus our attention upon Heavenly Father and His plan the Lord Jesus Christ and His Atonement, the edifying power of the Holy Ghost, and the promises associated with the sacred ordinances and covenants of the Savior's restored gospel. We've been reminded by many speakers at this conference that President Russell M. Nelson often refers to the plan of salvation as the covenant path that, quote, leads us back to God and is all about our relationship with God." End of quote. He teaches about the significance of covenants in our temple ceremonies and urges us to see the end from the beginning and to think celestial. Now I speak more of temple covenants. In fulfillment of his responsibility to restore the fullness of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Prophet Joseph Smith spent much of his final years directing the construction of a temple in Nauvoo, Illinois. Through him, the Lord revealed sacred teachings, doctrine, and covenants for his successors to administer in temples. There, persons who were endowed were to be taught God's plan of salvation and invited to make sacred covenants. Those who live faithful to those covenants were promised eternal life, wherein all things are theirs, and they shall dwell in the presence of God and His Christ forever. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is constructing temples all over the world. Their purpose is to bless the covenant children of God with temple worship and with the sacred responsibilities and powers and unique blessings of being bound to Christ they receive by covenant. The Church of Jesus Christ is known as a church that emphasizes making covenants with God. Covenants are inherent in each of the ordinances of salvation and exaltation this restored church administers. The ordinance of baptism, and its associated covenants are requirements for entrance into the celestial kingdom. The ordinances and associated covenants of the temple are requirements for exaltation in the celestial kingdom, which is eternal life, the greatest of all the gifts of God. That is the focus of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. The Lord told us that in the last days, there would be distress among nations. People would be lovers of their own selves. All things would be in commotion. 
confusion would abound and men's hearts would fail them. We have certainly seen men's and women's hearts fail them. The enticements of the world, the distraction of alluring voices, the neglect of spiritual nourishment, the fatigue from the demands of discipleship. Perhaps you have been saddened as you have seen someone you love who at one time spoke sincerely of his and her faith in Jesus Christ, or witness of the Book of Mormon and eagerly helped to build the kingdom of God, suddenly move away, at least for now, from his or her beliefs toward the sidelines of the church. My counsel to you is don't despair. All is well, for with God, nothing is impossible. With this prophesied commotion and disbelief in the world, the Lord promised that there would be a covenant people, a people eagerly awaiting his return, a people who stand in holy settings and are not moved out of their place. He spoke of a righteous people resisting the deceptions of the adversary, disciplining their faith, thinking celestial, and trusting completely in the Savior, Jesus Christ. Why is the Lord now bringing hundreds of his temples closer to us? One reason is that amid the turmoil and temptations of the world, he has promised to strengthen and bless his covenant saints, and his promises are being fulfilled. How do these holy houses strengthen, comfort, and protect us? We find an answer in the pleadings of the prophet Joseph Smith in the dedication of the Kirtland Temple. It was in this temple where the saints sang, will sing, and will shout with the armies of heaven. The Savior himself appeared, and prophets of old returned, bestowing additional priesthood keys to the restored gospel. On that sacred occasion in the Kirtland Temple, the prophet prayed that in the Lord's holy house, the saints would be armed with the power of God, that the name of Jesus Christ would be upon them, that his angels would have charge over them, and that they would grow up in the Lord and receive a fullness of the Holy Ghost. These powerful supplications are fulfilled in our lives as we faithfully worship in the house of the Lord. In his house, we are literally endowed with heavenly power. Our faith in Jesus Christ and our love for him is confirmed and fortified. We are spiritually assured of our true identity and the purposes of life. As we are faithful, we are blessed with protection from temptations and distractions. We feel our Savior's love as he lifts us from our difficulties and sorrows. We are armed with the power of God. As we come with willing hearts to the house of the Lord, the most holy place on earth, we grow up in the Lord and can receive a fullness of the Holy Ghost. Through the power of the Holy Ghost, we are filled with peace and joy and unspeakable hope. We receive the strength to remain his disciples even when we find ourselves outside of holy places. President Russell M. Nelson has declared, our Savior and Redeemer Jesus Christ will perform some of his mightiest works between now and when he comes again. We will see miraculous indications that God the Father and Jesus Christ preside over this church in majesty and glory. Dotting the earth with houses of the Lord is a mighty work and miraculous indication. The temple is literally the house of the Lord. I promise you, as you come worthily and prayerfully to his holy house, you will be armed with his power, his name will be upon you, his angels will have charge over you, and you will grow up in the blessing of the Holy Ghost. The Lord promised, Every soul who forsaketh his sins and cometh unto me, and calleth on my name, and obeyeth my voice and keepeth my commandments, shall see my face and know that I am. There are many different ways to see the face of Christ, and there is no better place than in his holy house. In this day of confusion and commotion, I testify that the temple is his holy house and will help preserve us, protect us, and prepare us for the glorious day when with all his holy angels, our Savior returns in majesty, power, and great glory. Joseph Smith's dedicatory 
prayer of the Curlin Temple is a tutorial about how the temple spiritually empowers you and me to meet the challenges of life in these last days. I encourage you to study that prayer recorded in Doctrine and Covenants, section 109. That dedicatory prayer, which was received by revelation, teaches that the temple is a house of prayer, a house of fasting, a house of faith, a house of learning, a house of glory, a house of order, a house of God. This list of attributes is much more than a description of a temple. It is a promise about what will happen to those who serve and worship in the house of the Lord. They can expect to receive answers to prayer, personal revelation, greater faith, strength, comfort, increased knowledge, and increased power. Time in the temple will help you to think celestial and to catch a vision of who you really are, who you can become, and the kind of life you can have forever. Regular temple worship will enhance the way you see yourself and how you fit into God's magnificent plan. I promise you that. We're also promised that in the temple, we may receive a fullness of the Holy Ghost. Imagine what that promise means in terms of having the heavens open for each earnest seeker of eternal truth. We are instructed that all who worship in the temple will have the power of God and with angels having charge over them. How much does it increase your confidence to know that as an endowed woman or man armed with the power of God, you do not have to face life alone? What courage does it give you to know that angels really will help you? Finally, we are promised that no combination of wickedness will prevail over those who worship in the house of the Lord. Understanding the spiritual privileges made possible in the temple is vital to each of us today. My dear brothers and sisters, here is my promise. Nothing will help you more to hold fast to the iron rod than worshiping in the temple as regularly as your circumstances permit. Nothing will protect you more as you encounter the world's mists of darkness. Nothing will bolster your testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ and his atonement or help you understand God's magnificent plan more. Nothing will soothe your spirit more during times of pain Nothing will open the heavens more. Nothing. The temple is the gateway to the greatest blessings God has in store for each of us. For the temple is the only place on earth where we may receive all of the blessings promised to Abraham. That is why we are doing all within our power under the direction of the Lord to make the temple blessings more accessible to members of the church. My dear brothers and sisters, I testify that this is the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. He stands at its head. We are His disciples. Let us rejoice in the restoration of priesthood keys which make it possible for you and me to enjoy every spiritual blessing we are willing and worthy to receive. I so testify 
in the sacred name of Jesus Christ. Amen.